Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. Two years ago, we did our first pizza episode. It was Detroit style pizza. I said at the time that the cheese I was using wasn't what's normally used. Uh, normally, a Detroit style pizza is made with Wisconsin brick cheese. Well, as I was doing my research for this and getting the ingredients together and everything, I found that the shipping for the Wisconsin brick cheese was more than the cheese. Now, you've seen our channel, you know we have all sorts of cooking implements. You know I'm not afraid to spend money, but there's just some personality quirk that I have that I cannot pay more for shipping than I do the actual item. So we use the substitute. Well, we have some good friends that just returned from Wisconsin when they were up there deer hunting, and they brought us Wisconsin brick cheese. So today, we're gonna answer the question, does it really make a difference? The theory is, is that the oils in the Wisconsin brick cheese, as they leach out, as they cook, help make that crust the incredible, fantastic, crispy stuff that makes a Detroit-style pizza a Detroit-style pizza. So today we'll find out, is it worth that money, that more shipping money than actual product money to get that Wisconsin brick cheese? So as I'm babbling, the director is working behind me to make me look good and uh, getting the sauce together, the Italian sausage browned. Uh, earlier today, I looked back on that episode two years ago, and I'll tell you what, I did a pretty damn good job of describing how to cook the crust. During that episode, I made two separate pizzas. We were testing a theory. If you're using a typical Detroit style pizza pan, how does that uh, work versus like a cast iron pizza pan? And uh, they were about the same. So I only made two pizzas. Today I have some guests coming over and we need to make one like we did two years ago. And then I'm gonna make two with the Wisconsin brick cheese. So I've got different ratios and everything. I think it'd be more typical for somebody to make two pizzas vice three. So, as I said, I did a pretty damn good job of describing how to make the dough for this pizza. I made it exactly the same today. So we're gonna go back in time two years to when I made that. And we'll also revisit how to make the sauce. Uh, the Italian sausage, you just brown Italian sausage. I hope that you don't need instruction on that. So, let's go back in time. So what I have here is 402 grams of bread flour. Not your regular AP flour, bread flour. I have 2.4 grams of rapid rise yeast. I have 8.4 grams of salt, sea salt. And 288 grams of water between 85 and 88 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna put that on the mixture and we're gonna let this mix until we have a smooth round ball. So start on low speed, which off is also a low speed. After applying electricity to your mixer, start at a low speed. After a little bit of mixing, scrape everything down, make sure everything gets incorporated, and continue on. Once it looks like all your ingredients are moistened, then you can go ahead and raise the speed. I'm going to let this go for about five minutes. So now I'm going to take a large bowl, and we're going to get that oiled up. And with wetted hands, plop our dough into our bowl. I'm gonna roll that around a little bit, make sure all sides get oiled. We're gonna cover this bowl and let that dough set for about 30 minutes in a warm place, like Arizona. Okay, our 30 minutes are up, so now we need to build some strength in those glutens. So we're gonna take our dough here, gonna oil our hands a little bit to minimize the sticking, and then we're gonna take it, get a corner here, stretch it, and fold it in. Turn it, stretch it, fold it in. Turn it, stretch it, fold it in. Turn it, stretch it, fold it in. And if I haven't lost count for the sixth time, turn it, stretch it, fold it in. Now, 
I'm going to take that and fold it a few times until I have a nice taut ball. There we go. And then back in. Now we're going to cover it again with plastic wrap after I wash this oil off my paws. Sticky paws make me crazy. Uh, and then we're going to let it rest for another two hours in a warm place. I have a 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes. These make the best damn sauce. I get a whole tomatoes because I like some chunks in there and the therapeutic value of what I'm about to do. So we'll start getting our tomatoes, drop them in a bowl here, and then we're just going to break them apart with our hands. Really a pleasant and relaxing feeling. In this container, I have about five or six cloves of minced garlic. Now, I love to use fresh herbs for my pizza sauce. So we're gonna take some fresh basil here. Just picked this up this morning at a local farm. We'll get that minced down nice and fine. Go ahead and add those to my tomato sauce. Then I'm gonna do the same with some fresh oregano. And we'll also add that to our tomato sauce. So I need to thicken this up a bit. So we're going to get it onto the stove. Here we are at the stove. First thing we're gonna do is get that pan on medium high heat. And we're gonna throw down a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Now we're gonna wait until we see that start to shimmer. Okay, I'm seeing some shimmering. Now we're gonna get our garlic in there. We want the garlic warmed up, roasted a little bit, maybe a little brown, definitely no black. So we gotta keep an eye on this and it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds. Get that in the oil, get it spread around. All right, I'm liking what I'm smelling. So now in with the tomato sauce and our oregano and basil. I wanna bring that to a simmer. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of sugar in there, healthy pinch of salt and pepper, and a little bit more olive oil, because I love that flavor. All right, starting to get a simmer, so I'm gonna take the heat down to low, and I'm gonna keep an eye on this and stir occasionally for the next 20 minutes until this thickens up. Okay, I think we're about there. So see when you take the spoon across there and it doesn't come back together very quickly, that means we have a good thick sauce. So that's what we're looking for. We're gonna turn off the heat. We're gonna get this into a bowl and get it into the refrigerator uh, until we're ready to use it. So the two hour rest of the dough is almost done. So we have a few things we gotta do. First of all, we need to get both of these pans totally lined with olive oil because we do not want that beautiful dough to stick. So put two to three tablespoons in each one. And then we're gonna take a paper towel and make sure we get every square inch of the inside of these pans covered with that olive oil. Next thing we're gonna do is prepare our garlic paste. This is in no way Detroit style pizza traditional. Full disclosure, I saw Sam the cooking guy do this and it seemed like a damn good idea. So that's what we're gonna do. So. We're gonna get our garlic paste here. I'm gonna get about eh, four tablespoons or so of that in here. And then we're gonna mix that with some olive oil. All right, and that's gonna go on top of our crust before we put the cheese on it. Dough's been resting for two hours. Woo, look at that. Definitely doubled in size. We're gonna poke that down a little bit. Then we're gonna get flour on our cutting board here. A little bit of flour on top of the dough. And get that turned out onto our cutting board. From here, we're gonna take that and get it into some sort of rectangular shape where it's easier for us to judge portions. And it's gonna make it easier for us to get in the pan. And then we're gonna cut this right in half. Right about there. Okay, I've got our two pieces. Now we're gonna put it into our cast iron. And then we're gonna work that and get it as much as we can to all the edges. 
Now it's not gonna go all the way for you. Those glutens are going crazy. So we're gonna have to let them relax. So work it easy, take your time. Unlike almost every other type of pizza, we're not trying to make a lip here. We want a totally flat surface all the way across. Just keep working it towards those edges until you get the good feeling that it's not gonna go anymore. All right, then we're gonna let that rest for 30 minutes and let those glutens relax. All right, so you saw how we did the crust before, we did it the same way this time. You saw how we did the sauce before, we did it the same way this time. Now I'm gonna put them together the same way we did last time. However, this time we have the magic ingredient. Shredded Wisconsin brick cheese, authentic from Wisconsin. So, Again, not traditional Detroit style pizza. Saul Sam, the cooking guy, do this. Did it in our episode and it came out incredible. I have here garlic paste and olive oil mixed together. I'm gonna brush my crust with that first. And you can see that I've taken them and I've formed them to the pan, pushing them all the way to the edges, making sure Detroit style pizza, different than all other pizza, no lip, flat dough all the way across the pan. All right, so the garlic's been brushed all of the crust. Now goes on our cheese. So for our test subject, same as we made last time, we didn't have Wisconsin brick cheese. So we substituted low moisture mozzarella, which we shredded ourselves, and Monterey Jack cheese, which we shredded ourselves again. You always wanna get the blocks and shred it yourselves so it doesn't have all that uh, anti-caking agents in there, which is fine for cake. Well, no, it'd be horrible for cake, wouldn't it? Because it's anti-caking. Huh. Anyway, put the good healthy layer down, getting it all the way to the sides. My oven has just hit 550 degrees Fahrenheit and I have a pizza stone in there. And as always, all the ingredients, the amounts, and the directions are down below in the description section. So, Wisconsin brick cheese. I can definitely feel that there's more moisture to it, and uh, that makes sense. It's allegedly the oils that's gonna leach out of this cheese as it cooks that's gonna make that crust super incredible. Next, not exactly traditional to Detroit-style pizza, but as I said two years ago, and it still holds true today, I cannot physically make a pizza without Italian sausage. Can't do it. Putting about a half pound on each pizza, now the pepperoni, and again, just like last time, take care to pick pepperoni that has a natural casing. Why? Because under that intense heat, the, inten the uh, natural casing is gonna shrink first, which is gonna give us little cups of pepperoni. In those cups is gonna be delicious pepperoni oils. Again, more traditional uh, Detroit style pizza style. Next is our sauce, the three strips of our thick sauce. Now we just chuck them in the oven, 16 to 18 minutes each. Next you'll see us, we'll find out, does the brick cheese make the difference? We'll see you then. So they are out of the oven, they've been cooling a bit, so we want only the most impeccable possible judges. So again, imported from the state of Washington, a published expert on Detroit style pizza, we bring you Evelyn. So here's the deal. These pizzas are both Detroit style pizzas. Mm -hmm. They have different cheeses on them. So you're gonna try one of each and tell us which one is better, okay? Really hot. That's probably, the, that's the one that came out of the oven last. So the theory is the type of cheese you use on it, the oils that it releases, makes the crust more crispy, more flavorful. So that's what we're trying to figure out here. On one of these pizzas, we've used the original cheese, Wisconsin brick cheese. The other one we've used substitutes on. That should be a lot cooler. <laughs> that one's been out of the oven for 20 minutes. <laughs> that one's been out for like five. I definitely think um, that this one is better than that one because this one definitely has a lot more flavor to it than that one does. 
is the, can you notice a difference in the crust between the two? Um, I, I'd say that that one has more crunch to it than that one. It, it would definitely seem like that one would have more crunch to it, but it's really more flavorful than crunchy, and that one um, just has more crunch to it. Okay, so if you had to pick one of the two, you would pick this one? Mm -hmm. All right, there we have it. So she picked the one with the Wisconsin brick cheese. So according to Evelyn, who is impeccable, you got to trust her. Look at that face. Then, uh, yeah, it's worth the money. It's worth the extra trouble to get Wisconsin brick cheese. So this other one was still good though, right? No, the other one was delicious. Okay, so My yeah, opinion, if you want delicious pizza, use the substitutes. But if you want super delicious pizza, get the Wisconsin brick cheese. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. And until we see you next time, fair winds and following seas.